So in this segment, we are going to cover camera control and operator client. Um, from dragging cameras into the viewing window, how to display them, resize them on the screen, um, to controlling cameras within each image pane. Um, depending if you have a fixed camera, a PTZ camera, or a 360 or 180 de degree panoramic camera will depend on how you control the camera in the system, but the functionality is pretty similar for all of them, uh, which we will cover in, in great detail. Um, we'll also explain the difference between digital zoom and optical zoom. Um, there is a pretty big difference, and we can see that um, within the different image panes of operator client, and we'll co cover other tips and tricks to optimize using operator client. Your organization needs assistance with any aspect of BVMS or any of your security systems, please contact your security system vendor or our professional service, services team at support at midchest.com or visit our website at www.midchest.com. Let's get started. So in Operator Client, there are a few different ways to view cameras. Um, in order to drag cameras into the viewing area here, there is one of two ways that you can do it. Coming over to the logical tree, you can click on a camera that you want to view and simply click and drag it into the image pane that you want to see the camera in. Within the image pane, you do have a few options on how to resize the camera. If you just need to view one camera and all you want to see on the screen is one camera, you can grab it by the corner and pull it to expand the window to take up all four cameos. If you wanted to shrink this back down, you would come down to the corner, click and resize it. Another way to resize the window is coming up to the top here and pressing the minus button. So this will only have you will you'll only have one image pane displayed. Um, or if you wanted to then put more cameras onto the screen, you would simply just hit the plus. When you're ready to view the next camera, you'll notice that there is a, a light blue highlight around the box. It may be yellow in older versions of BVMS, but it'll always be highlighted in some form. You can double click a camera from the logical tree and it will pop it into the next available open space in the viewing area. So since we have a camera in the first pane, it's going to put the next camera right here. And then after this camera, it will jump down to this image pane. So we come over to the logical tree and we click on the camera that we want to see. Just double click and then the image appears. And then if you want to see another camera, you can simply double click again and it will put the camera in the next available space. If for some reason you need to close a camera, you no longer need to view that particular camera, you can come up to any of the top right corners of the image panes and you will see a little maximize button and an X button. The X button will simply close that one particular image pane. If you needed to close all the cameras, if you were done viewing all the cameras that you were looking at for some reason, um, you can clear them all at once by coming up to the top right and clicking the clear all button and that'll close all of the image panes that are on the screen at that time. One thing to note is currently we have four available image panes out right now. As you put cameras on the screen, you're increasing the load in which the computer has to support. Higher resolution cameras such as 360s, 4K cameras, um, or cameras with a lot of activity in the scene are going to require the computer to work a little bit harder. So 
in the top right here we have a little CPU indicator. Right now this is not showing anything, but when we start putting cameras on the screen it's going to increase the load on the computer. So we can see that creep up here. Depending on your computer is really going to determine how many cameras you can have out before we start to see an increase in CPU usage. This is a little bit higher end computer so it's able to support more images at a time. But we can start to see the CPU bar in the top right here has one bar of activity on it and as we keep adding cameras to the screen it is going to work the computer harder. In newer versions of BVMS and higher end computers you can shift the the graphics processing off to the graphics card so if your computer has a high-end graphics card it's not so taxing on the CPU itself when it is when the CPU is doing all the processing you will more than likely start to notice images stick and stutter um, these images wouldn't maybe be so smooth the truck might skip across the screen um, that's usually a problem when you just start working the computer too hard if that were the case, you could simply start closing images out and it would decrease the load on the computer. The CPU bar at the top is, is just meant to be an indicator um, as to how hard the computer is working. It may not be 100% accurate at all times, but if you have sticking images, then more than likely you the computer is just working a little too hard for what you have on the screen. So Joe will now talk to us about how to control different types of cameras within operator client. So the first type of camera that we are going to cover is a fixed field of view camera. You can tell that a camera is a fixed camera from the icon in the logical tree on the left hand side next to the name. So you will see this camera here is a fixed camera. So we'll take a look at that first. So this is a fixed field of view camera. Uh, so the only control that you really have is digital zoom. There's two ways to digital zoom with a fixed camera. Uh, down in the left hand corner you have the plus and minus of the controls for digital zoom in and out. So the plus is going to digitally zoom in and the minus will digitally zoom out. The other way is with the scroll bar on your mouse. Wherever your mouse is inside the Cameo is where the uh, digital zoom will happen inside that image. So if you're trying to digitally zoom on a specific object in the scene this is a little bit easier than using the digital controls and if you're uh, zoomed in you can grab the image and move it around to find exactly what you're digitally zooming in on. The next type of camera that we are going to cover is a PTZ camera. You can tell a PTZ camera from other types uh, by this icon here of a dome type of camera. So PTZ stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. So it is a moving camera. Uh, the first thing we're going to cover is moving the camera. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. Um, down in the left hand corner you have a lot more controls than previously with the fixed camera. Um, one way to move the camera around is by the joystick, which is just like a, a joystick that you may be used to. So 
So we can go left, right. We can even, you know, we have full 360 degree control of camera movement. And then we also have the up, down, left, and right arrows, which we can also move the camera that way uh, in this area as well. The other way we can actually move the camera from inside the field of view. So we can left click anywhere in the image and a circle will appear. And we can move the image of the camera uh, just like a, a joystick would. So we have 360 degree control all the way around that circle. The farther you pull it from the circle, the faster the camera will move. So keep that in mind if you're trying to very easily uh, follow an object maybe inside that scene. Next thing we will cover is zooming of a PPZ camera. So there's a couple different ways. We can zoom from down here in the left hand corner. So just like the fixed camera, uh, plus is going to increase zoom and minus is going to reduce the zoom. And that is digital zoom control. But for optical zoom control, you can use the mouse wheel. And as you zoom in, you will see in this left-hand corner of the image pane how much you're actually zoomed in on the camera. So this particular camera has a 30 times uh, optical zoom. better image. So you'll see we'll get right to 30 and then you'll see the numbers drop back down and then you'll see a DX. This is for now we are we've hit our optical zoom limit of 30 times and now we are digitally zooming. next thing we will cover is a setting a preset so you can move the camera to the field of view you would like to save as a preset right click and click on save predefined position we we'll use this drop down here we will create position 2 and we will click OK now we have just saved pre position 2 and it has been stored on the camera so this particular camera does have a preposition one set on it, and the camera is um, meant to go back to preposition one after a given amount of time, which it has just now done. So now if we want to return to preposition two that we just set, down in the left-hand corner, you will see predefined positions. We'll drop that down, select position two, and the camera will go back to position two, which we just set. One thing to note with PTZ cameras is that the camera is only recording what it is seeing. So if you move the camera, now we are recording this image, uh, just something to keep in mind. The next type of camera we will cover is a panoramic camera. The icon for this is very similar to a PTZ, except it has an arrow around the icon which you can see here. This particular camera that we are showing you is a 180 degree camera. Uh, and there's three different types of ways you can view a panoramic camera. There's the circle view, which is the native image, a panorama view, and a crop view. So the first view we will take a look at is a circle view and you can get to this just by left clicking. This is the native image coming from the camera. Um, one thing to note here that this particular type of camera is always recording this native uh, view, this circle type view. So no matter what we do when I show you the, the next type of um, ways to view it, this camera is always recording 
this circle view. So from the circle view, you can zoom in using the mouse wheel. And you can also pan and tilt, move, in, you know, move around inside this image just like a, um, a PTZ camera almost. So the next view we will take a look at is the panorama view, which in a 180 uh, kind of just makes the camera look like a fixed view. A 360 is a little bit different. Uh, but again, you can zoom in, zoom out, and move inside the image as well. The last type of view is the crop view, which you will notice is is very similar, except it's um, a view that we can pull out and set um, many images on, uh, which I will show here in just a second. One thing to note is that we can pull five views out of one single um, panoramic camera off of one stream. So if we go to a circle view, and I can hold control and I can click anywhere. So I'm going to click in the left click in the hold control and left click in the right hand side of this camera. And I will drag it and, and set it in this cameo. And then here, So as you can see, I can pull multiple different views off of a single image off of the panoramic camera. And that is camera control inside of BVMS.